Just hold the stick, hold it flat up against it. You take your domino die. He's, he could be logged. I'm looking around. I'm, I'm. So if you only have, let's say this is, this, let's just say this is your only white oak around. There's, I want him to be my dominant tree. I want to put my nutrients towards this tree. This is going to be my crop tree in the future. A tree. So how does that, okay, that might make you some money. How does that, how does it affect like the crop production, the mass production? And is so it good he, for wildlife and deer? It's great for wildlife. And a white oak is one of the most preferred uh, trees for deer they, in low bottom ground. I went, I did TSI on them four years ago. They were all about six, six, inch, six inch diameter. But since I'd already done the TSI, they'd already broken the tape and most of them were measuring 10 to 12 inch. All right, I'm out here with Michael and Tristan. Tristan, we're gonna walk this project 291. We're gonna first look for a timber stand improvement uh, projects and possibly if it's worth it for logging and get some more specifics on it. And what, who do you work for? Uh, Brenner's Forestry, uh, that's uh, my company's name, LLC and everything, and I've uh, been doing this about uh, 10 years all together, and absolutely love it. This is my worker, Tristan Willis, uh, and my cousin. We, uh, we both do this together, and um, he's been with me for about eight years, I guess, so we've, uh, we absolutely love and enjoy it. All right, man, let's get hiking. Either because this diameter of the tree and everything, so we instantly know it's 26 there. 30 there, so round about 26, 30, 28. 28. So we'll, we'll go ahead and call this a 28. It's got eight foot log to be, it could be come out of this. This would be what we call almost a free tree because all ash are dying. Um, it, it, can, it can be logged right now, it's a loggable tree, but in the contract that we write up for two years, in two years this could be on the ground. Probably not, but this is a, this is a loggable tree. So when you say a free tree, meaning you, you should cut it just because of the ash borer or whatever's going on? It's it's past its time. Okay. It's, it's emerald ash borer has killed it. it. You can already see it's dead up at the top. Oh, yeah. yeah. So by the contract with the logger for two years, if let's say it, they, they take two years to get in here to, to get this woods cleaned out for logging, that tree may already be on the ground. So we put a red X on okay. it. it they'll, bid, they'll take the bid for it, but, you know, who knows it could be on the ground in less than two years all right yes i you basically what remove the non-desirables remove non-desirables so a lot of these little trees come up the beach the beach trees that are coming up are non-desirable but here you have really nice oaks right oaks then you have a nice 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 white oak right there um which is one of your highest dollar trees right now uh, it and black walnut but if you look at this it's got a north facing slope so you know you're going to have better white oaks on this north facing slope of course um but with the elm and everything else northern red oaks hickories post oak over behind it um nice ash that's still halfway alive over there but so that ash is probably 20 plus yeah you got a double fork a double fork so co-dominant stem on it um it's still a loggable tree definitely on the one but they would take both but you start looking like right and would here. that white oak go white oak so on a, on a se se section like this i'm not seeing any other white oaks i like to leave a white oak per acre if you're not finding any for regeneration growth okay. because if we take that one white oak out there's no more okay we, we want to see some white little white oaks coming up because if we don't we're going to have this little hickories taking over where we want to see all these nice white oaks coming up like right here, this is non-loggable tree just yet uh, for a select harvest. 16 inch diameter there, 16 there. So the 16, is, uh, it, it, but with pro proper TSI by taking out uh, your hickories and your other other uh, junk, junk trees around, this tree will get more crown. As you can see, the white oak is actually taken off, taken over one side so it's only had two, two to three sides of this tree has only, only been open up its entire life is that one there white oak that's an elm that's an elm yep that's an elm okay um then right here you've got a dogwood with a little bit uh, mark right there um but if you look up you can kind of see how this white oak is crowded over this this uh oak over here red oak to where he's opened up on one or two sides but never really had the potential to branch right. out all the way same thing with this hickory with this white oak it's went up through the white oak but yep. 
He's not at his full potential. So you guys would actually mark all the trees? I don't mark actually him and I when we cut, we, we cut as we go. Okay. Him and I have been doing this long enough, we know exactly what to look for and what what the property needs. So so if I'm hearing you right, you do the logging? No. Or so no? we mark a timber sale. Okay. And then we send bids out to all the all the local loggers, only the ones that we trust and right. know do a really good job on the ground. And they come in, uh, look at your ground, and already know how many board feet per eight or board feet are is gonna be all taken out of this ground. And we 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 mark the only the trees that we want them to take for a select harvest. Timber stand improvement we just cut. Oh, we okay, all right, yeah. Cut. Okay. But yes, on a that timber sale, sense. so what we do is if we had spray paint, let's say let's just say this white oak was to come out. We do we instantly go, okay, well this tree right here is forty eight there. Thirty four there. So what is it, big guy? So, what'd you say? Oh, you said 48, 48 on one side, 48 on that side, 34 on this side. 43, 42, 42, 43, somewhere in there. So that's that's what we go because you be conservative when you when you mark one. Uh, you know, you always want to, but you can see you'll have an eight foot log and then if you go up to the eight inch diameter you could possibly have another one but probably not so if this one was was to go which it won't we won't take this one we put three dots one orange dot one orange dot one orange dot and then we put an orange dot at the bottom that way whenever we come and do our inspection of the logging if we see that this tree has been taken but then that tree over there has also been taken it didn't have an orange dot at the bottom well, just out of curiosity, I've thought of that. I mean, what's to stop guys from just taking them and putting a dot on the bottom? Us. We are the stopping of that. If uh, if we see a tree that's been taken that doesn't, it, that's why we put the orange dot at the bottom. Right. When we put that orange dot, if we when we do, because we come in and we inspect it before they start, we inspect it at midway, and then we inspect it again after after why afterwards. Okay. And if we find out that they've taken trees before they they haven't, no bueno, not good. We're going to find them. We're going to make sure they're, they're held responsible for it. Um, that's just how, how we can make sure to keep the loggers happy. Because if you hire just a regular logger, most of the time they're going to come in and they're going to take it. They'll, they'll take that, that red oak there. It's not yeah. ready. It's not ready yet. It needs more time to soak. It needs to get more mature. So by doing, by doing a select harvest like us and doing a licensed timber, uh, timber buyer and seller. Is that a white, a white oak right behind you there? All right, so this is the difference. This is a white, actual white oak. Okay. You look up at the top, you can see the flake of your bark. Yep. Then you look over here, you see this is a white oak too, but that is a post oak. It's still in the white oak family. It's a lower dollar value white oak, but it is still a white oak. Okay. So big difference though in price. Big, I, I okay. honestly can't tell you what the price is right now because it's went up a, a drastic bit for, white, for regular white oak. So when you are saying about let, you wouldn't want to take this one, but let's say you took that one, would that post oak suffice as leaving the one behind? No, you want the true white. We want the true white oak. Because okay. The, actually, the federal government, don't hold me to this, but this is what I've been told, just passed it to where, you know, like your whiskey barrels are made out of white oak. Okay. Well, the federal government, you know, used to say, you can use the, the white oak barrel over and over and over. Well, now they only want you using the white oak barrel once. So wow. guess what? Oh my gosh, yeah. Now you can imagine what the demand for white oak yep. is now. Yep. So that's that's why the demand for white oaks went up so high lately. Um, but then, you know, we start getting over into here and we start looking at what we got. Have some red cedar. But this right here, I always tell everybody, some foresters, some, some contractors don't do this. I do it. This is grapevine, parasitic. It will actually go up and you can see what it's doing right now. Oh, it's yeah. choking this cherry bark oak out and killing it. So what I like to do is make a cut here, make a cut here or down lower, whichever. You want to at least make a, what they call a bridge gap. So cut it right here, cut it right here, at least a two to four inch gap. <coughs> Spray the bottom with a tri triclopyr glyphosate or Roundup RT or Tordon RTU mixture. You'll kill that vine. But most guys just want to come in and they want to cut it right there and be done. Well, when you cut it, it will actually bridge back over and this vine going up the tree will still live. Mm. So make you a bridge cut on in between. Oh, 
but right here is some nice, oh, nice small nut. He's begging for TSI. He's already grown his nice straight log. He is your trot tree right here. Walnut? Yep, walnut, but he's surrounded by elm. So almost all these elm would need to come out. Here's a secondary trot tree. Your ash is dead over there, so persimmon right behind him. You're a deer hunter, of course, leave the persimmon. I can open up at least two or three sides by taking out all these elms around. This now gets a good amount of sunlight. He's your crop. Over there, I see a hick couple hickories, a nice post oak, but all these elms right here really need to come out so we can get some more forest regeneration on the floor. Yep. Uh, sassafras junk. Uh, when you take them out, do you just girdle them or do you cut them down? I actually am a very big fan of getting everything on the ground. I don't like double girdling because if you are a land, if you as a hunter, last thing I want is for you to be walking in the woods with a dead yeah. dead tree standing above your head, worrying when it's going to fall on you. I prefer per personally like to, personally like to get them all the way down on the okay. ground. So with that, do you cut them like as low to the ground as you can, no. four foot high? Two no. foot high. So what I like to do, like I said, some guys are different. Some guys like aesthetics, but I'm also a hunter and I've done it, I do this on my own ground. So let's see these pawpaws need to come out. If you start cutting pawpaws right here where most guys cut and you're coming through the woods, this one's cut, you hit that, you fall, mm -hmm. yep. you're gonna impale yourself. Whereas if I go ahead and I cut them right here, and I try treat them with a uh, Tordon RTU or glyphosate mixture or anything, they're gonna stand dead for a year or two and then they're gonna deteriorate and they're gonna be gone. Same way with these elms. I like to cut them about right in here, somewhere right, th right about the waist. That way I can still control the tree when I'm taking it down and you have a stump. As long as you spray the outside cambium layer, he's dead. He's not coming back. And the rot, the tr the, it'll be gone in a couple years probably. And there is no market for, like for you guys with any of like the if you got elm or something that's let's say 8 10 14 inches that you want to take out is there any secondary market for that not really because the elms can still get dutch elm disease and kill and will kill most of them too for what the log value is for this compared to that that right there is the top dollar and as the, as the way this tree stands right now once he's opened up and he's mature he's at 20 inch to, uh, diameter you know the you would be almost crazy to leave these elms and not or take not take these elms but uh, with that uh walnut there he's gonna have a nice 24 32 foot straight log already that's gonna be money that's what we're talking big money someday okay so tsi right now so mike was talking about the walnuts those are the good crop trees those are the high dollar and then for the deer hunters we also like to leave the persimmons because that's deer candy for them. It's a nice fruit for them. What time of the year does it usually fall? Uh, October, November. October. Well, usually October, actually. Yeah. Ripens. So they're already going to be in here getting acorns off of these oaks that are already dropping in late October. And then persimmons, that's just another added bonus for them. They, mm -hmm. like, they like them. Nice. All right, let's keep rolling. All right. 24 foot log come out of them. Yeah, that's huge. This is a tulip poplar, by the way. Tulip poplar. 30. 32, so we'll say this is a 30 inch uh, tulip poplar, 24 foot log. That's a good loggable tree right here. It's not the it's not the premier wood by no means, but it could still be logged. Okay. Really pretty pines in here. So as far as logging, first question, do you take them? Secondly, uh, TSI, do you want to remove them? So on pines, they're mostly pulp wood. Uh, they are pulp wood. But no, I don't normally, we don't normally take pines. I mean, is there a circumstance we do? Yes. But in this scenario right here that you can see, you have red cedar, uh, some dogwood. Uh, there's really no hardwoods in this select spot. So no, you could go and come in here and open the ground floor by taking some of your dogwoods and red cedars out to open it up to get some type of different regeneration growth going. But no, in this aspect, I would not take the, the pines. I would leave them. Um, are they possible diameter to be taken? Sure. We'll check it. We'll check it out and see what they are. And I presume red cedars all go? Red cedars are... Uh, in a hardwood setting, I like to take red cedars out because they produce a lot of shade. I still leave some, but I like to take a lot of them out. Uh, yeah. Just just because if we're trying to grow hardwoods, they're, they're a main competition, definitely on the mid canopy level. So 
we look, we're at 26 there. <coughs> 26 there so 26 inch oak or not oak uh, pine he, he could be logged but what's the purpose he's 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 a nice tree you got a tulip poplar off to the side you have more pines there's no hardwoods i would leave this tree take out the dogwoods take out the sassafras take out more mid canopy work on your cedars to try to get something and a prescribed burn right here would be phenomenal to really impact and get this ground to pop for uh, some regeneration growth coming up that you want. With definitely with hardwoods being directly just right over there, uh, this would be a great spot for a good uh, prescribed burn to. Okay. Just hold the stick, hold it flat up against it. You take your dominant eye, take your yellow all the way out to the edge. Okay. Now you look out to there and see what, what's it say? 20. 20. So that is a 20 inch white oak right there. So then, just to make sure, so you're on, on target, you do it again over on another side. Don't move your head. 18 and a half. 18 and a half, or I guess 19. 19, so yeah. he's right there. When I do it over here, he's a 20 to 21. 20 to 21 over there, so this is your light side. He's... He could be logged, I'm looking around, I'm, I'm seeing other white oaks. He's right there at that line of where he could be logged. Eh, would you? Probably not, but maybe. He's got a, He's really got a nice 16, at least 16 foot log uh, on I don't know if I caught it on camera, but tell me again why, if you only see one good white oak per acre, why you don't want to take it? So if you only have, let's say this is, this, let's just say this is your only white oak around there's no other white oaks around we can see that there are but let's just say those there's a non-exempt those are red oaks i'm going to look at the tsi aspect and go okay this hickory this hickory that hickory that little white oak staying uh that shag bark hickory probably needs to go i want him to be my dominant tree i want to put my nutrients towards this tree this is going to be my crop tree in the future and or acorn <laughs> producer whatever whatever aspect of you want for this ground but for log quality i can already see He's, he's good, he's healthy. He's got at least a 16 foot log right now. I want this to be my crop tree. I want to leave him for regeneration growth, take out all this ironwood junk around him. I want him to be my, my crop tree. So how does that, okay, that might make you some money. How does that, how does it affect like the crop production, the mass production? And is so it good he, for wildlife and deer? It's great for wildlife. And a white oak is one of the most preferred uh, trees for deer. They, they've got a sweet, low tan and acorn. Uh, they produce, they're, I mean, you look around, you can see acorn, you can see some acorns on the ground here and there. Um, but opening him up and letting him grow by taking out, let's say that this hickory over here, you can see he's, he's kind of, he's got his crown is kind of encapsulated right now. He's got a lot, a lot of stuff affecting him. But by taking out this hickory, taking out these little hickories, taking out these ironwoods, he now has room to grow. He has he's, these are taking nutrients away from him right now, and, and also affecting his crown. So it's plausible or even likely that when you do the TSI, that this produces this, more mass. This will de this will it will definitely produce more mass whenever you do TSI because you can only grow so many board feet per acre. Tell them about your acre or your pecans that we just cleared out around yesterday. So on a CRP plantation I have right now. I had uh, L or northern pecans in there in low bottom ground. I went, I did TSI on them four years ago. They were all about six, six, inch, six inch diameter. I put blue tape around it as snug as I possibly can. I went in this, another, after four years, to do TSI again. It helps to keep, up, keep them up. They were already getting over, overgrown by sycamores, elms, and maples again. But since I had already done the TSI, they had already broken the tape and most of them were measuring 10 to 12 inch that's unbelievable growth because of tsi you're opening that crown up you're taking away the ones you were saving yes those were my crop trees okay so the putting on the mass you know yes by taking out these other trees he is going to then feel comfortable it's kind of like a human if you have your air and everything you, you survive and you thrive well right now he's kind of holding on because that's taking nutrients from all these little trees these hickories are taking nutrients from him you take them out more of the nutrients go to this one tree, he then starts to really grow. All right. Thanks. Mm -hmm.